Connell Board of Sewer Commissioners to order Thursday, March 28th, 2013 at 6 p.m. for the agenda approval, approval of minutes to 2813, mail chief operators operations report, FY 213 and 14 wastewater treatment facility OM budget. I have a motion to accept. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion. Approve the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Approval. 228213. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 As amended. As amended. Mail there is none. No. Yeah, it will stay up. It will stay up. No mail. No mail. No mail. In chief operator's report. Okay, <clears throat> all recorded reports were completed and sent to the state. I did receive an inquiry into a new sewer connection on Route 7. I believe it was outside the Act 250 uh, sewer service area for Powell, and I actually checked with the listers and a &E and it was. So I did advise them that they'll have to find a, a separate, separate solution for that. But I've also received inquiries into two other connected parcels, actually three, <coughs> as of today, um, that may want to expand within the next several months. So that's good. We'll have the reviews coming online within the next year. And I did complete the state required um, wastewater treatment facility update survey and the facility classification matrix. I discussed that at our last meeting. It was due by March 12th. It tells the state what we are, how big we are, how many stations we have, what we're responsible for. They're revisiting how they classify wastewater treatment facilities, which in the past has been just done according to flow, and now they're looking at the number of pump stations and all the other um, variables, computer integrated systems, and taking that into account as well. Um, Leslie McVicker from EK Boston is going to come out next week and inspect, inspect the uh, levy fix. And Linda and I are working together to coordinate that visit here at the plant. And just in general, we had a couple of snowstorms that required us to be out plowing, shoveling, and cleaning up the stations over the past several months, and no problems to report. And we returned the UV channel to the headworks. We washed down the walls, floors, and bulbs, and any burnt out bulbs were replaced as well. And Jeff was kind enough to donate some more angle iron to the plant, which he had at home, so that would be helpful you know, for future fabrication projects. I did receive a 2.30 a.m. pump number two fail at PC1 on the 19th, and we have to take apart that discharge line again uh, before and after on that pass round. It's just something that we fight all the time. Um, again, with a reminder, please flush only toilet paper and things that should be flushed. If you could refrain from flushing things that shouldn't be flushed, it sure makes our job a lot easier and saves you guys a whole lot of money who are on the system, so keep that in mind. And the other um, pictures are just we've begun spring cleaning some before and afters on that. And another reminder, um, no vehicles should be driven beyond the lower parking area. And we encourage people to come and walk their dogs and ride their bikes and park and walk and, you know, of course, enjoy this whole area. We did have someone get very, very stuck this past week. They tried to drive beyond the lower parking area and had to be towed out. Um, there were some kids, they did drive over and apologize and say they wouldn't do it again. I think it's just contact, making that initial contact and spreading the word and um, just letting people know that they shouldn't do that. So again, just working with the community, trying to get the word out there, please. Just park and walk. Park and walk. <laughs> and Ron, I know that you wanted to revisit the number of sewer decommissions that we should allow per year. Once the policy goes into effect next spring, I wasn't sure if that was something that you wanted to do at this meeting or considering we may have new EUs coming online. Was that something that you guys wanted to wait until the policy goes into effect? I just wanted to mention that because I know it was something that you had brought up that you wanted to discuss again. Yeah, I think I made a note to revisit that in a minute. I mean, the policy doesn't go in effect to the spring. We might be, um, we might have a better idea come fall of where we are with EUs and what we might want to consider for reduction. My quick math is start with two EUs a year and as an allowance because that will greatly affect the bottom line and the cost of the other users. But I'm just throwing that information out. It's up, you know, obviously up to you. We figured that and we could have a waiting list. Can you, and you can revisit. I've never seen it before, but. 
you can revisit this, you know, whenever you wish. It's I just wanted to bring it up because I know Ron was concerned and that he had mentioned. Well, I'm concerned for the fact because uh, I don't mind the places that got assistance being, uh, you know, they got a lot of them. They got 30, 40, 50, 60 spots. I can see limiting them, but as far as if a person goes away with a, with a second home or has got a cottage that's hooked on or something, I can't see where they fit in the agenda. I think that they should be, when it's their time to be, and they want to decommission, they shouldn't have to pay for something they're not getting because they didn't get extra work or extra anything else. Should priority be given to people who are individual homeowners? I'm not sure. Well, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, if a person, I doubt if there'll be very many, but if a person does have, a, say he's got a mobile home in his backyard, he does away with it or whatever, well, he ought to have a big commission. So if we were to start I don't think two. it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal if it's, a, you know, uh, if you've got places that did get substantial assistance, mm -hmm. Like the mobile home parks and stuff, there was a network of piping put in. There was all kinds of things done. So I can understand that. A lot of money invested. Limited. That's right. A lot of money was put in there, federal and state money. But there wasn't a lot of federal and state money going into a lot of these. They're dumping in the same line. So it's, it's not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think it would be fair to them people. I don't think there'd be a lot of them. I mean, I'm sure that uh, if you're within 200 feet of the line, you've got to be hooked on anyway. So the place has to disappear. And I mean, it's, it's a private residence. It isn't like a, a, a business facility or whatever. Well, since the policies are going to take place until February next year, do we want to wait then and, and see how many use come on and how that would affect next year's budget and then make a decision then? I think that's why the plan was originally because we got, what, till 2014 before? February 2014, mm -hmm. right. So it won't be applicable to anyone until that time. So that would give us time to see how many of use come online, how that affects next year's budget, since I don't do my budget until February and March. And then you could consider it then. Then we do a total on what's there, what, then we have an idea of what the number is. That's a year away. Because we can't have any spike. Because if we get a spike, then it's going to affect the users that are on it. Right. Which we've got to be careful of, too. I, I agree with Ron on that charging somebody if they're not using the facility and they want to discontinue it, but we got to protect the other users also. So we okay. have to have a limit on there somewhere. <laughs> so it's up to the board of what they think about the timeline. I, I think further out is a better idea. Um, personally, I, I go with Darcy thinking about that. I, I want to give a, a little history on the connection. If we paid for connections for sewer to every individual home. The parks, the same way, basically, they were the ones that started with us connecting every one of their homes. The difference was that we're dealing with one property owner that has a multitude of hundreds. And I think that's where I think Ronnie is trying to make the point is, is that somebody, I'm, I'm thinking of the one park that came in here one time and wanted this to continue, what, 15 or 20 of them. That's, I think, where you, if it's a single person asking for a lot, but be aware that the, the town actually, through grants, paid to connect everybody up. And we actually did a bunch of replumbing in homes as well, not just through the park. So, so that money was spread out all over the place. So, so it's not a money issue. It's, I would say it's more of a, a single owner, multi, you know, I own a three apartment house. I could say I want them all disconnected. Is that a fair thing to do if you only got about two a year? I end up taking all the slots. Just to give you guys thoughts, that's all. That's the sort of thing to think of. Yeah. We probably, when we come to that, and that, that makes a good point that we have one, one EU, EU user per person per year, it would come up something in that familiarity. So one person can't take whatever we balance out for the year. They can come back the following year. That's what I was thinking, but then you have to put a cap on that too because you won't let 10 people coming in and be commissioning one. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, we I think we're still them. thinking about it. I think we're still kind of all in the thought process about how we will actually want that wording to go. Yes. And we have time, so yeah. I think it's important to take yeah. it through thoroughly. We have a limit on how many you're going to let go, regardless, whether it be a mobile home park or an individual. 
maybe two or so three. Got new hookups. No, no, these are existing. Existing. Somebody that said, I have a trail on my lot, I decided to get rid of it. I just live in my house and I'm going to rent the trail. They want to physically so disconnect from the city. They the They're taking the unit out. We're not policing something that's like a, we're not policing like a trailer park. A trailer park, we're not going to get involved with saying, well, we're not going to ride by you every day right. or every six weeks or something and say, well, she's got one missing. I added one back in. This is physically taking it right out. And that's why I, I don't believe it'll amount to much. Because if you're required on the thing to, uh, you know, in, in the same like if you're talking about like a home, if you want to decommission and you've got a two apartment or three apartment or whatever it is, if you want to decommission it, well, you've got to take the kitchen and stuff out. So you've got to do some real altercations. Mm -hmm. But if a man has something on his property, he's going to get rid of it. He was forced on it to start. That's the point I, I have to stress. Because if a person is forced on with being within 200 feet, and he had no reason to keep the thing, and then it became vacant, well, therefore, should he be penalized? For years and years waiting to be decommissioned when he's not using any part of the facility. I think it's terribly wrong. I'm on the system myself. If mine has to go up a couple dollars to, to support uh, not stealing from this person who isn't getting any use out of it, I'm all for it. No, That's where I stand. And I think that you made your point, and I think that we did revisit the policy, and I think we did set the date. I think the matter is, is just how many we use all together. Right. I don't think anyone is arguing either. We have all understand. I think that's why we wrote it and we have in place and that we set a date for it to begin to blanket the town. So why don't we just give us some more thought at this point and bounce around some more ideas about total. We do have time and Could you do have to have a total. Okay. Just, I just want just to come into it. Never get used, you have to have a figure. We, we will as it could happen. When the policy does just when you place. don't expect is when you're gonna get yeah. and something I don't expect. I don't know if it's turning error, but before we set a figure here. And you said there's a 2.7% two per, 2 increase. That was a typographical error. We okay. just corrected that. Then, Sorry about that. Then the EU count got from 692 to 691. 691, yeah. So what's the actual increase? It, 1%. It so was, for every it's EU, we lose about a 1% increase? It is, um, um, let me see. I was going to go over the budget in the end. Do you want to? All right, no. Nope. I'm just looking at that. It, the bottom line is a 1% increase in, in the bottom line overall increase from last year to this year. On the whole budget, right? On the whole budget. Per user, if, let me just, I'll pull that because you're asking that question, so I'll just it. Per user, it goes from. $111 per quarter to 114 It's a $3 per quarter increase. So two separate things there. But that was a typo. We're yeah. just going to fix that. <coughs> can, I, can I ask you a question sure. here, too? Um, when, you, when you're in a mobile home park, who actually pays for the sewer usage? Is it the owner of the park yes. or the individual tenants? The owner. The owner of the park. They're the ones that get billed from the town. Yes, they are. Okay. So, and we don't individually send bills out to anybody in a mobile home park. Our property owner. Property owner. Okay. Oh, yeah. Property owner gets the bill. If they're in Kentucky and they have a house here and they're renting it, it goes to Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Like the mobile home park? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, just real quick, as I mentioned at last month, I'd like to increase the subdage dumping fee so it's in line with the neighboring communities that have gone on. I have increased our rates here in seven years, so um, I'd like to ask the board to approve a, just a minor increase from 10 and a half cents a gallon to 12 cents a gallon. I still want dumpers to come, um, but I just think that we need to be in line with what we're being charged to get rid of our biosolids, well, which is 12 cents. And the average is 12. Yeah, we were just increased from that to Williams County to dump it. To a 12 for a bio salad. So I think we're in line with uh, the neighboring community. Make a motion to go to 12 cents. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor of going to 12 cents? Aye. 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 
Okay. And the last thing is really on the budget approval. I know I gave it to you all last month. I haven't made any other changes. I emailed, I talked to Ron. Um, you know, Rich is new to the process, so um, <coughs> I'm just not sure. There's really nothing that's going to jump out at you as being out of line or really strange or new. Um, it's a really tight budget <laughs> that we are going to do our best to adhere to, and that's what budgets are for. So if you have no other questions or any other input on that, I have the copy for signature. Everybody's taking a look at this. Does anybody have any questions? I looked at it there, but we got it before. I forgot it tonight, but I'm all set. Right, thank you. Everybody's all set with this. Yeah, I briefly looked it over. I really don't know what I'm looking at yet, but I... You'll be more familiar yeah. when we start talking about repairs and where things are coming from. It'll make more sense. You're in pretty good hands, Darcy. Keeps <laughs> a pretty what I hear I hear. If you have any questions, it's just contact me. It hasn't made much now. change, but we got to hope we can find somewhere to get some money. For capital down the road. Because things are worn out every day. Mm -hmm. We do our best to stay on top of everything. But that's just the reality of it. So yes. So we need a motion to accept the budget. Yeah, so <coughs> I just wanted to know when the loan was paid off. The last loan payment is August of this year. And how much is that? Forty thousand dollars a year. Okay. Yeah. When they talk about finding money for capital, I just wanted. Yeah, that was one. Of that's in your budget today. One of the ways we're hoping to put money and capital down the road is that the 40000 that we're currently paying every year on a line of credit would then be put toward capital. But then pay for one current expense so. Yeah. And that will be very important down the road because I know a lot of communities are in situations now where, you know, it, it's, it's sometimes easier to pinch straight in the moment. And then, you know, 10 years later, go, oh my gosh, we have a broken sewer line, what do we do, or a water line? It's good to be, like, you know, you would budget for your own home, or it's good to be prepared and budget for the future and just the maintenance of the line. And so that uh, will be something that we definitely need to consider and take care of so that we're in a good situation down the road. We do it with our other departments. Right. Okay, yeah. motion to sign this. Motion. All in favor? And that's all I have to um, for my off to the state asking if we could revise our, our septage plan and um, they approved it. So that kept our cost level rather than doubling. All signed. Okay, if there's nothing more before our short commissioners, so I'll take a motion. Most in favor. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.